Good morning. Good morning. Oh, y'all can do better than that. Good morning. Good morning. This is a special day. It's not just back to church Sunday. It's not just church on the ground Sunday, but it's the opening day of the NFL football season. Dang, oh, y'all don't. Go ahead, ho, ho, stand up. Stand up, ho. Go ahead, ho. (laughs) Woo! Go ahead, ho. Oh, we're Mark Rooney. Mark, Mark, don't sit. Show up, Mark. You got a baby in your hands, but you're going to represent. Go ahead, represent, Mark. Woo! All right. There you go. You bunch of losers over there. There you go. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Reverend Robert L. Johnson. I am the pastor. They call me Pastor Jay, and we welcome you to Messiah United Methodist Church, the church on the hill that will not be hid. Amen? To all of you watching us online right now, we want you to sit back and relax, but we also want you to plan your visit to Messiah. I want to see you in person. This is Back to Church Sunday. That means that we go back to 1030, but it does also mean that, watch this, that we want you to have a good time in the Lord always. Amen? So clap your hands, stomp your feet, root. We're going to do, we're not going to do the Eagles chant. And we're not going to sing the Eagles song. Yes, who said yes, we will? (laughs) Tyler will be singing a song in the rain and outside, amen? But but we just want you to, we just want you to have this opportunity to worship with us. Let me, uh, before we start service, let me give a, 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 a big thank you. I want to give a big thank you uh, to all of those who helped prepare today. We thought we were going to be outside, but that's why God gave Messiah a gym. Amen? Because even though it rains, it still won't rain on our parade and worship and praising God. But I want to thank those who are out there grilling. I want to thank those who are going to be uh, doing our games. We're going to have some games. We've got some food. We're going to be in the gym. And, uh, oh, and, and other than that, there'll be some prizes for some folks, too. So don't run, because you might win something uh, if you stay around. We'll have bingo for the, for, for the seniors and those who are brave enough to, to, to challenge a senior. If you get cracked with a cane, it ain't my problem. And we also will have some games and stuff for the kids as well. Also, this week, this week, Wednesday night, this Wednesday night, starts our Bible study. Our Bible study night will be here uh, in person and virtually on our Facebook page. You can get the materials online under, under the Bible study a tab, and you can download those and get ready for us. Now, I would like to thank Lori Lorenz for pulling all of this together for the bowling party last night. We had a great time last night at bowling. I think she said about 35, 36 people showed up for, for bowling. And somebody beat me. Where's she at? Who beat me? Well, no, we ain't talking about Bessie, now. Nah. Be- Bessie a ring or two. We ain't talking about Bessie. But where t- where's my young person that beat me? Who beat me? Stand up. <laughs> Sophie beat me. Sophie beat me. Amen. So, Sophie, all, all, all shout outs to you. Everything's good. Uh, me and you'll talk afterwards. I'll hook you up. I got something for you for beating me. That's going to be a, a, a firm talking to, uh, but we're going to have a good time. I also would like to thank, and she's not here yet, uh, Mary Basmajan, who set up with, the, with, with, with Our Town Alley, uh, the, bowling, the, the bowling night. Thank you so much. But you know what? Uh, we have a renter for our parsonage. Everybody say amen. 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 We have a renter for our parsonage. But, but now, Frank, don't sit down. Frank, don't sit down. Frank, stand up. Stand up, Frank. Stand up, Frank. Stand up. That's that's all right. Uh, Frank, Sylvester, and uh, the Board of Trustees, especially Phil and all of them, but especially Frank. Frank, I want to thank you uh, wholeheartedly for all the work that you did around the parsonage, all of the trustees, but you had a labor of love, and I'm going to thank you so much for the hard work you put in to make this come. See, I believe in giving folk their flowers while they're alive. And so, you know, I want to say thank you so much for all that you, and and, and your lovely wife as well. To her, I said thank you. And she can give me some gardening tips uh, later on. Amen? Amen. God is good. Are y'all ready, worship?
Come on, y'all got to be more like, y'all not even Eagles fans. Y'all so be hyped. People at home, I would like to sincerely apologize. <laughs> We're going continue- <laughs> to continue to worship. You know, all, all y'all fans and everybody bring their jerseys, but I just got one thing to say. Let's get into worship. Vikings. Let's go. Please rise for our call to worship. Good morning. <clears throat> Come all you people and give thanks to the Lord. Come, let us call upon the name of the Lord. Sing songs to God and speak of God's wondrous work. Our hearts rejoice, we glory in the Lord. Seek the face of the Lord forevermore. Let us recall the works, the wonders, and the judgment of the Lord. Come, let us greet this great God with our hymn of praise. Please remain standing for hymn number 369, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Please be seated. Come to an attitude of prayer. Holy God, we ask for your help, your power, your spirit, so that we can amend our lives and grow more each day into the image of Christ. We confess that we fear what is different. We confess that it's easier to lock the doors of our community than to receive those who don't look like we look, love like we love, or vote the way we vote. We confess that we have not lived out your call to share in abundant life and unconditional love. 
We believe that you have the power to turn us around to a more inclusive way of living. So we ask you to do that. We ask you to give us the courage to change. We ask that you give us the energy, intelligence, imagination, and love to be your people in all we say and do. Amen. This morning's first reading comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verses 1 through 14. And I've lost it. <laughs> it is up on the screen, isn't it? The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel, that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month, then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. We're going to have the gospel reading. Could you stand for the reading of the gospel? Matthew chapter 15, I mean 18 verses 15 to 20. Let us all read together. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are allowed. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, Take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. This is the word. I truly tell you. Oh. Truly I tell you. Truly agree on earth. Sorry. About anything you ask, it will be done for you. 
it will be done for you by the Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. All right, kids. Wait, 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 wait. When you hear, when you hear this music, Jesus loves me, this I know, that's when y'all come up. They running, but come on up, cause, cause come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Here come my boy. Come on. Come on, Brian. All right. What's up, y'all? Come on. Can I can, can See, y'all kind of y'all kind of mad at me because you know. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. All right. Now that's the song. When y'all, y'all hear that song play, y'all get to come up, okay? All right. How y'all doing? Good. You had a good time at bowling, those that went? You did? What did you learn from bowling yesterday? You said nothing. You said nothing. <laughs> you said nothing. Did you use bumpers? Yeah, you had bumpers. And you had, you had the, the thing that helped you throw the ball down, right? The little no. ramp. Brian did. Okay, you didn't. You just threw the ball down there. Yeah, because you're a big boy. I got you. What did you learn? That I'm really good at bowling? He said, I'm really good at bowling. Man, you're going to be cool forever. What did you learn? To never give up. That's what I want to hear. That's what I want to hear. Now, now listen. Everybody know what a gutter ball is, right? You know, I, I rolled a couple of gutter balls last night. Don't tell nobody. But I rolled a couple of gutter balls. But, did, but, but the key was we never gave up. <laughs> did anybody make a strike? I did. You made a strike. You, ma- you made a strike too? You don't even know what a strike is. Yeah, you made a strike. When the sides were down, you made a strike. Okay, here's today's lesson. Now listen very carefully. It doesn't matter whether you win or lose, it matters that you try your best. Doesn't matter whether you finish first or last, the only thing that matters is that you try your best and that you what? Never give up. Who's playing football? Who's playing, who's playing football? Okay. Now, you guys play on a team, but you can't win the game by yourself. It takes everybody on a team to win. And everybody on the team has to give that effort. God wants us to never give up on the things of life that he's called us to do. But there's three keys. Here go to three keys. And this is, ba- this is mainly for, for, the, for, the, for the adults, but I want you to hear it too. The one thing out, the, the first key is, is you always do the will of God. Whatever God tells you, you do. The second key is have fun in doing it. I am having more fun being your pastor than I've had in a long time. You guys are so much fun. And even though some of y'all, you know, like Sophie might beat me in bowling, we still have fun because that's what God calls us to do. And the third thing is love the Lord and pray every night before you go to bed. I know you might be tired. Grab mom and dad, grab whoever and say, can we pray? Because prayer is unlocks the door to God's love in your life. Got me? Y'all let me know when y'all games are. Let me know when your games are and where they are. I'll try to get to them. Who? My door? My door is open, but I don't got no candy on the desk right now. See, that's what he wants. Say, say, say. He said, where's your door? You are candy on the desk. All right. Anybody got any questions? No, no questions? Can we finish now, Brian? We can finish? Okay. There's a werewolf at my door. All right. Come on. Give, me, give it to me. All right. Now, I was going to do something, but I don't want to do it. Everybody put your, put, your, put your hand in. Come on, stand up, put your hand in. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> 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 
All right, on the count of three, everybody say, go Jesus. One, two, three. Go Jesus. All right, y'all go, y'all, y'all dismiss. You thought, you, th- ah. you thought I was going to say, go Vikings. Everybody stand up. We're going to sing our, our, our hymn, which is, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. All right. All right. Now, 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 I I need to give a shout out. I need to give a shout out to my home church. Amen. Tenley Temple, who showed up. Amen. All my Tenley folk, just wave your hands. Amen. Thank you so much for coming and and being with us. Amen. Amen. And and, and then I got to give a shout out to, to... to really my second mom, who is, who is who, who's my cousin, amen, for real, y'all, my real cousin, uh, Pearl Ham Peanut, amen, Peanut, so let, 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 and Stratford is here, and Diane, and, 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 and Sharon, and, and Ben, and Brenda, we thank you so much for coming out uh, to, to support us today, and to be with us today. Uh, I, and, and of course, you know, what, what, what can I say? You know, I got, I got the best family in the world, amen? You know, my mother-in-law, father-in-law, aunts, uh, uncle, and uh, sister-in-law is here today. And so we just thank them so much for coming out and supporting us as well. Y'all ready? Y'all need to get out your pens and paper and, and, and get ready to write some stuff down. I got some stuff for you, you know, amen? Greg got the memo. Thank you so much for wearing your Eagles gear. Thank you so much. Let's go to Philippians. Let's go to Philippians uh, chapter 4, starting with verse 12. And I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. And I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Yet, 
it was good for you to share in my troubles. Let us pray. Father God, as we come together to preach your word, to share your word, to know your word, to have this opportunity to come together one with another. Lord God, let us know that, Lord God, that right now we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. Strength for the journey, for the day that lies ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I've come too far to turn around now. Amen. Everybody say, I've come too far to turn around now. Now, 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 here's, here's, here's how I wanted to preach this today. And I wanted to preach this today. It's, it's because I'm, I'm winding up my last round of college meetings. My last round of college meetings are coming up, and then I will be writing a, a, a comprehensive uh, meeting with the leadership. We'll be writing a strategic plan and a vision and a mission for Messiah. But what I found out is, watch this now, is that this church is more resilient than you even know. Is that God has blessed you beyond measure. And that is not in saying that, 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 that you all that in a bag of chips because you are. But what I'm saying to you is, is that, is that whenever stuff gets hot here at Messiah, you guys know how to stand shoulder to shoulder, call upon the Lord, and move forward. Am I right? See, see, you exemplify amazing grace. Why? Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Now, if we were talking about it today, and we should say, comma, and we'll still go through, grace has brought Messiah this far, and grace will lead it on. And so, and, and so, and so when, when, I, when, I, when I thought about this, I thought about my own life. I, I thought about how, how I've had times of plenty and I've had times of struggle. First, let me put it like this. Is there, is there anybody in here who can legitimately say, other than kids, uh, that you've not struggled? Everybody in this room has had a struggle. Everybody in this room has had a, had a situation or something you had to go through. Everybody in this room had to cry one time or another. Everybody has had something in their lives that has caused them to really check their relationship with God. Huh? And the problem is, it's not the fact that it checked your relationship. It was the fact that, watch this, God had put within you everything for that moment to cover that storm. You were equipped to go through what you went through with grace and sometimes not graceful, but grace, and have the opportunity to know that where I'm going is better than where I left. Write that down. Write that down. Write that down. Where I'm going is better than where I left. Whoo, I'm, 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 I'm great preach this thing. I'm great preach this thing. The way I feel it. Dr. Foster, you got to excuse me. You might want to lead a room for this one, but we all right. Our district superintendent, uh, Reverend Dr. Andrew Foster III, is here. We thank him so much for coming today. I'm going I'm going I'm going to work it out. I'm going to work it. Everybody in this room has come from somewhere. Am I right? You've come from somewhere. There was a point in your life where you were somewhere. And that somewhere where you were was just, watch this, a temporary place. Everybody say temporary place. See, God puts us in temporary places while he's preparing us for the next phase of the journey. But sometimes when you're in the temporary place, it makes you uncomfortable. See, the problem with being uncomfortable is, is that you don't understand it, but the key is in your uncomfortability is where God is shaping you for the next phase of your journey. Y'all got me? See, we don't want to be uncomfortable. But in order for you to grow, you got to be uncomfortable. If you want a pearl, watch this. The oyster has got to be uncomfortable in order to, with the grain of sand, that causes the pearl, come on, to grow. It's an irritation. Everybody say irritation. See, the devil wants to irritate you, but he doesn't understand that while he's irritating you, the layers of grace of God are making you into a spiritual pearl. Jesus. Ain't that deep? Never get mad at being uncomfortable because uncomfortable brings growth. 
Amen? Some of our best lessons in life have come from our uncomfortable moments. But when you're uncomfortable, that's where you find out who your true friends are. You find out who's behind you when you get uncomfortable. Go ahead, lose your job, let your money run down, and see who's on your side. Hmm. Am I right about it? Folk will be with you when you're on top, but will they stay with you when you're at the bottom? Amen? And see, here's, 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 here's the deal. Watch this. Here's the deal. The reason why you can't go back, not just because where I'm going is better than what I left. Write this down because you're going to need this. It's because God is with me on every phase of the journey. He says, Paul says, I know what it is to have a lot, and I know what it is, watch this, to be, to, to, to be in need. But what does he do? Here's the thing, Lori. He says, but I can do all things. Oh, everybody say all things. See, now here we go. I got to always tell y'all to write this down, but write this down. God's power is limitless in my life. I want you to believe that. God's power is limitless in my life. And what that means is, if God has no limits on my life, in my life, walking through my life, then why am I putting limits on myself? Mm. Mm. The kids told you. They learned to never give up. And the reason why they learned to never give up is, watch this, is because they understand that if they keep trying, they can come out on top. But see, the problem is we're so busy calculating our losses that we can't celebrate our victories. Wow. Wow. See, 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 one of the things that I've learned is, is that sometimes you got to say goodbye to say hello. Woo. <laughs> Somebody ought to give the Lord a hand kind of praise for that one. Sometimes, sometimes you got to lose in order to win. Sometimes you got to say goodbye to say hello. Sometimes you got to walk out to walk into. I got news for you. The thing is, sometimes you got to walk out of old self into new self. The the, the song says, morning by morning, new mercies I see. We want to stay in the old mess instead of walking in the new mercies. Woo! Huh? Every trip you make to the doctor, watch this. If the doctor may say, listen, the doctor may say, listen, your x-ray wasn't too good, but you serve a God who's good. See, 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 the devil, the enemy wants you to go back and have a pity party. But God is saying, let's turn up the music and have a praise party. What am I praising for? Because I can do all things. Because the God that I serve is awesome. Because the God that I serve is mighty. Because the God that I serve made a way out of no way. The God that I serve woke me up this morning. The God that I serve put food on my table. The God that I serve washed over my kids. The God that I serve. Listen, when you start telling up what God has done for you, you'll be in the, in the house just doing it again. And y'all, y'all got to look that up. I ain't going to do it for you. But when you count everything that God has done for you, how he watched over you, how he made a way for you, how he, listen, he didn't just wake you up this morning, but guess what? He woke you up this morning and during the rain, you thought it not robbery to come. Some folk came from South Philly. Some folk came from West Philly. Some, you said, I'm going to get there. And the devil said, but it's raining. And you said, that's all right. We're going to get there. Why? Because the God that we serve thought it not robbery to wake us up this morning. And you grumbled and you griped, but thanks be to God, you are alive to grumble and gripe. I don't feel like going. Well, guess what? God said, I felt felt it not robbery to wake you up this morning. Get out and go somewhere. Now, here we go. This is great. You'll get this for free. When I write the book, you got to pay for it. (laughs) This is for free. This is for free. Listen to me, everybody in this room. God has a blessing with your name on it. The only thing you have got to understand is you haven't claimed it yet. And see, the reason why you haven't claimed it yet is not because that the gift isn't good. 
but God is getting you ready to receive that blessing he has in your life. And the blessing God has in your life is so unique because watch this. God loves you so much that he says, I will refuse to let you go back because you've come so far where you are right now. I refuse to let you go back to the gossip. I refuse to let you go back to the bad relationship. I refuse to let you go back to the anger. I refuse to let you go. He says, I can't let you because you've come too far. He said, I I found you in, in, in a bad place. Brought you to a better place. Now I'm going to move you along life's road to even more and more riches and glory. Listen, you know what it is to be hungry and I fed you. Naked and I clothed you. Broke, but I gave you a Can I get a witness up in here? Everything you got, you got because God gave it to you. It isn't because you got dashing good looks like Mark Rooney. But it's because God blessed you. God blessed you. Everybody point at yourself and say, God blessed me. And because God blessed you, watch this. You ought to give him the praise for blessing you. Watch. I may not have everything I want, but daggone it, he's giving me everything that I need. Huh? Am I right about it? Who got a roof over their head? Raise your hand. Come on, praise God. Who, who, has, who has somebody who loves you? Come on, praise God. And listen, who got a dollar in their pocket? Just a dollar, I ain't going to ask it. <laughs> praise God. That's a blessing. Somebody stepped outside last night. Somebody don't have anybody to love them. Somebody's sick and can't get well. I, I'm preaching to somebody up in here. But here you are. Here you are. And you know what the young people are looking to you to see? They're looking to you to see, how did you make it over? How did you get it through? How did you do it when when stuff was tough? How did you keep the faith when you were sick? How did you work it out with your kids? Tell me the lessons of life that you've lived over these 90 years. Tell me what it is to be a, 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 a new mom. Tell me that, what it is when you're a new mom and then you got another new mom. <laughs> Tell me what it is. Tell me what it is when you get sick. Tell me how you made it through. Because the thing is that they're going to look to you. And they're going to ask the question. They're going to say, how do you keep on going? How do you keep on going? Then when you look back and you see the one set of footprints and you look back and see how he carried you through. Well, why do you keep going? Because you got to look at him and say, I've come too far (laughs) to turn around now. It has not always been easy. Amen? Amen. Come on now, COVID taught taught us that it ain't always been easy. I don't know about you, but I'm going to tell you the truth. When COVID hit, I was as scared as I don't know what. Amen? Come on. Now now, now raise your hand if you were scared. I did over 40-something funerals during COVID. Amen? Somebody coughed in the supermarket, Elsie, I'm jumping. Y'all don't get it. Sucks. Six feet? I will give you 12. (laughs) Let me close. Come here, Ben. Come on, Ben. Mark, you got a baby? Come on, Mark. Come on, Greg. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Come here, ho. <laughs> blame them. Don't blame me. There you go. Just hold that right there.
I see the vision. I see where God wants me. I see the blessing. That's the blessing right there. And while I was here, watch this, walking in sin, God sent someone. Come here, Betsy. Come here, Heather. See, God will send people who will take you to places, but they can only walk with you so far. So they found me where I am. Watch this. Listen to me carefully. There's some people who will find you at your lowest and walk by you. But you need the people who are going to hold on to you. Amen? And they can only walk me so far. Because when their job is done, they release. But then all of a sudden, I see Jesus. I find Jesus. Turn face me. Turn face me. And no. <laughs> and and when they leave, y'all go sit down. When they leave, the Holy Spirit picks up. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, you got the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That's too much pressure. That's too much, That's pressure. Too much pressure. The Holy Spirit. But well, watch this. When the Holy Spirit picks up, watch this. The demons start to come. Oh, we're That's true. Uh, The Holy Spirit's got me, and the demons are blocking me, right? So all of a sudden, come here, Irv. Come here, Frank. Come on, Irv. Come on, Frank. Come on, Dave. Dave's standing back there looking. You must have wanted to be a part of it, Dave. <laughs> the Holy Spirit calls goodness. And mercy. Now, Dave, I'm going to do something that I'll probably regret. I got the Holy Spirit, goodness, and mercy. Remember, goodness and mercy are going to follow me all the days of my life. When the Holy Spirit showed up, goodness and mercy. But I got news for you. They, they're not afraid of goodness and mercy. They look, they laughing at goodness and mercy. The Holy Spirit, but, but, but when Jesus shows up. <laughs> Everybody clap. This the first time. This, this, this is the only time I'm ever going to have David be, they, they be Jesus. When they see Jesus, they got to move. And watch this. <laughs> Jesus is leading the way, but watch this. I'm still not moving because I've got comfortable in my condition. Woo! So goodness and mercy, give me a, don't push me hard. <laughs> give, give me a push. But I'm too busy watching my enemies that I can't get to the place where God called me. Now watch this. Soon as I get ready to turn around and go back, Jesus grabs me. The Holy Spirit pushes me. And goodness and mercy is saying you can't go back there because your blessing is right there. And if I keep my eyes off of my problems and follow Jesus, the Holy Spirit, goodness and mercy will lead me to the place where I can get my blessing. Y'all can sit down. Thank y'all so much. When Daylene asked me, how did you get here? I can look back and say, I've come too far to turn around now. Amen. Amen. amen and amen. Get a lot of hand clap of praise. Amen. amen. Woo. <laughs> offering, right? We're going to take up our offering uh, unto God. And while we're giving shout outs, the slides you see every week, Kristen does them. Kristen Moser does our slides. And every time she hits an email from me or a text, I know she's saying he's going to change something. He's going to change something. <laughs> Kristen, thank you so much for what you do uh, for, for the kingdom. All right. It's offering time. Everybody say offering time. Now, listen, God loves a cheerful giver. 
But if you don't have anything to give, smile. If you don't have nothing to give, still smile. Because what you gave God today was worship. So you may not have anything monetarily give, but you've given worship to him. Amen? But we want you to give liberally in the house of the Lord. We still got bills to pay. Amen? <laughs> Amen. So we're going to ask the ushers to come forward. I got you, Laura. See, 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 um, Laura bowled yesterday and her back is hurting her. I told her, go talk to my wife. Her back hurting her too. And, and, and I'm going to let her sit down and, and she's going to do whatever. So the ushers, y'all go ahead. We're going to lift our offering on the God. Y'all singing. Y'all go ahead. Shall we stand? Increase our talents and offerings so that your name is exalted with unending praise. Blessed is your name. Amen.
We're going to have the prayers for the people. We do invite you. We do invite you. If you, if you show, if, if you please, we do invite you to the altar. If you have someone you want to pray for as we pray for one another, we ask you to bring uh, your prayers and concerns. We're going to be praying for the Overton family today uh, as they get ready to um, funeralize Brother Doug Overton. Uh, Bethany and her family and her father passed away suddenly yesterday. All the moms, uh, all the moms' uh, can scans came back clear of cancer, and that's from Emma. Yay! Praise God from whom our blessings flow. Oh, the Walters have a grandbaby. The birth of Claire Ann Walters, born on 9 7 at 9 at 9 15 a.m. Claire is the granddaughter of Lori and Kevin. Yay! Woo! We having a baby boom, ain't we? We having a baby boom, aren't we? All right. We're going to be praying for all of our, our loved ones and concerns. Uh, if you have someone you want to pray, uh, pray for, uh, as uh, I'm just going to ask that, uh, that, that we play something softly. If you would like to come to the altar and pray, we can pray right, right at this moment. Can everybody bow your heads? Father God, we thank you for Joyce, for the birth of a new baby, for scans that come back negative. We thank you, Lord God. You're the God who heals, but you're also the God, Lord God, who walks with us, Lord God, in uncertain times and times that, Lord God, that we don't know we need you, but you show up right on time. This morning, Lord God, among these that have come, we pray for Andrew Foster IV, who's, Lord God, going in for a kidney transplant. Guide the surgeons, guide the nurses, guide the anesthesiologists. Lord, we thank you for the recipient. We thank you for the donor, Lord God, because, Lord, that is such a blessing that someone donated a kidney, so that Andrew could have, Lord God, a life filled with love and friendship. And, and, and Lord God, that's a blessing. Bless him. Bless his dad right now, Lord God. Bless Dr. Foster. Lord God, bless his mom right now. But more than that, Lord God, we thank you for every good and perfect gift. The gift of family, the gift of friends, the gift of life. And God, for those who are walking down that dark path, for those, Lord, who are, who are dealing with loss, we pray for Bethany and the loss of her mother, of the loss of her father. We pray that, Lord God, that right now you bless the Overton family and the loss of Mr. Doug. We pray that you bless those who just last night, Lord God, went out and never came home. It's those, Lord God, who are in the path of a storm. And bless, Lord God, right now our community as we try to be a blessing to those right here in Lafayette Hill, those in East, in East Norton, those, Lord God, wherever we may touch people, let us be a blessing. And Lord, let us never stop moving because, God, in you we know we've come too far to turn around now. Bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, if you're visiting with us for the first time, uh, Daylene, where are you? Daylene has these little visitor's cards. 
Don't you, don't we? Oh, yes. See, see Daylene for a visitor's card. Now, here's what's unique. I need your email address or your, or, or your cell phone number so that I can get in contact with you. And as soon as you leave here, today or tomorrow, you'll get a message from me thanking you for worshiping with us today. And then we will make sure that you're kept apprised of everything that we have, that we have going on here. Especially this great thing that, that I've been told we have called chicken barbecue. We definitely got to get you in contact because we want you to come to chicken barbecue. Amen. They tell me it's, it's one of the greatest things you'll ever taste in your life. That's, that's what they tell me. That's what they tell me. You know what they say. They, they say taste and see. You know what I'm saying? Ain't that right, Mark? Mark, I'm hyping your event and you just sitting there. Like an Eagles fan. Come on, man. So we, are going, so we want you to, uh, uh, what, what date is that, Mark? October 21st, chicken barbecue. Eat in and take out. Eat in and take out. So, you know, and Pastor will have how many tickets? Pastor will have one ticket. No. <laughs> Pastor will have 10 tickets, and so I want to make sure that we get, and how much are they? $15. That's a lot of chicken for $15. For chicken. It's a whole meal for 15 bucks? Yeah, you can't get that at Boston Market. Oh, let's, <laughs> but we want you to come to Chicken Market. It's time to get out of here. Listen, we have some stuff at, at the gym. We're going to go over there. We got some food. We got some stuff at the gym. We want you to come by. I know there's some people in here that I have to give tours to, but, uh, but, but there's some. Now, before we leave, I need to tell you something. That little cardboard cutout of mine. <laughs> this is the lady who got that cardboard cutout made of me. <laughs> that was my farewell gift from Tenley Temple. All right? She screamed, I always need an associate pastor. So she got me one. <laughs> this is Margaret Gross. She's been knowing me since I was eight. Amen? Her and her late husband, John Gross, real quickly, John Gross would give me some money in my hand and tell me, don't tell Margaret. <laughs> Margaret would give me money in my hand. <laughs> Dave, I'm revoking your membership. <laughs> Bring it to the front, Dave. The Minister of Defense. I, I, I did call him Jesus. I'm rethinking that now. But at least he did give me the minister of defense. Oh, thank you. Go ahead. Y'all take y'all pictures now. Go ahead. Come on. Come on, Ben. You got your picture? Ben, you, huh? You want me to... Um, so <laughs> my father-in-law just looking like, hell no. <laughs> Dr. Foster, do me a favor. On behalf of myself and my family, please thank Bishop Scholl for this appointment. <laughs> Seriously, thank him for this appointment. This is the most fun I've had in a long time. Um, I mean, Dave, <laughs> can you come get this thing? <laughs> and you know what? And you know what? I know Irv is back there now saying they got him. They got him. 
My, my neighbor Irv was like, they got them. We got proof. We got proof. All right. Uh, come on. Okay. <coughs> the Lord's Prayer? We should do it? Yeah, because y'all need prayer right about now. <laughs> Let us all pray together the prayer that the Lord taught his disciples to pray. Our Father. Now we can sing. See, I, see, I do have an associate pastor. <laughs> Let us all sing and sing our closing hymn, This Little Light of Mine. Oh, wait, I got to do the benediction. <laughs> Bow your heads. Father, we thank you for this wonderful day, even in the midst of the rain. Even in the midst, Lord God, of them traveling from the highways and byways to get here to, to fellowship with us, Lord God, as a community of faith. And so, God, as we leave this place but not your presence, as we go to break bread, Lord God, I pray that you will bless the food and those that have prepared it, that we may all, Lord God, be filled with food, but, Lord God, our hearts might be filled with the fellowship of getting to know someone new. Give us your grace and peace for this day and the day ahead. And never let us turn back because we've come too far to turn around now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we're going to go to the gym for food. Those of you who need to sign in, please sign in, and then we'll go to the gym. Amen? Fo follow, follow my folk because they know where they're going. <laughs>